All right, year 10s, this is the 2018 test on trigonometry and uh, very similar sort of to what you'll expect this year. Um, I'm going to go through the multiple choice section and the short answer and the extended response. I'm going to explain to you how I did the question. You might have a different way, but by all means, I'm trying to show you often the, the, the most time efficient way. Okay, with working. Now, unfortunately, you, do, well, you don't get working marks for multiple choice, but sometimes you might need to do a little bit of work. You want to. Um, it's just, I don't want you just circling answers when there's actually a little bit of working involved. So let's get started. We've got the true bearing of uh, from O to A. So from O to A, the true bearing is always the true bearing of it's from north and we're going clockwise. So we're going around here. Now that's 90, that's 180, and in here is 50 degrees, and in here must be 40, this must be 90 degrees, so therefore that's 40 degrees. So 180 plus 40 is 220 degrees. So the answer is C. So always it's it's clockwise from north, that's the true bearing. Okay. Now, however, the true bearing of A from O, now this could be, you could actually draw a compass here and, and you can go the true bearing and the true bearing is that, that angle in here. But in actual fact, there's a bit of a trick. If, if the true bearing from O to A and then there's A to O, the difference between the two is always going to be how many degrees. Think about what's, that, what's, the, what's the angle here? What's that angle? 180 degrees. Now, if I add 180 to 220, that's going to give me over 360. So I'm going to subtract 180. So if I was to, now this is just the easy way to do it, 220 degrees, subtract 180 degrees is equal to 40 degrees, like so. So there, there's the answer. But if you didn't know how to, that little shortcut, then you'd have to sort of draw your diagram here. Now, just, just so you know, uh, first of all, if I've got these angles in here, if I, that angle, can you see here that this angle corresponds to this angle here, the alternate angle, okay? That's sort of like uh, trigonometry that you've done in maybe year eight, okay? You might have forgotten. But in actual fact, that angle in there is 50 degrees, okay? So, so that angle in here is 50 degrees. And if that angle in there is 50 degrees, and this is is north, then that angle in there must be 40 degrees. Okay, so there's two, two ways of doing it, isn't there? But I like this method, okay? Only when it's from the same two points, O to A, A to O, all right? Six metre ladder makes an angle 25 degrees with a wall. So I'm just going to draw a diagram. No, you don't get marks for drawing a diagram, but it certainly helps you you draw, uh, get, get, frame the question the right way. And the ladder, of course, is six metres and it makes 25 degrees with the wall. So it's not with the horizontal because this is the wall here. So we've got a 25 degrees over here. The distance from the base of the ladder to the wall. So we've got to find X. So, you know, you're not going to get the mark for that, but, but in, unless you draw the diagram correctly, I'm not sure how you're going to be able to get it. So we've got the opposite and we've got the hypotenuse. So we can use sine. So sine of 25 degrees is equal to opposite, which is x. That's that distance we're trying to find over 6. So therefore, multiplying both sides by 6, x is equal to 6 sine of 25 degrees. So we're certainly not going to be, um, it's certainly not going to be three, I can tell you that now, because sine of 30 is a half. It's certainly not going to be one. Uh, I'm just going to be guessing it's around about two or 2.5, but I'll have to do that in my calculator. Six times trig sine of 25, it's in degree mode, and that's 2.53. So it's closest to 2.5. Okay, angle of depression. So remember that the angle of depression is the angle from the horizontal, but it's going down. So this is the angle of depression here, this little question mark. To the nearest degree from a lighthouse beacon, blah, 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 blah. 
So what we need to do is let's work out what this angle is here, I reckon. And we have, uh, if I have that, I have, this is my opposite and this is my adjacent, which means I'm using tan, but we're not quite done, of course. We've, we've got a tan of, let's call this angle theta. Tan of theta is equal to my opposite, which is 1.2 over my adjacent, which is, oh, be careful, 1.2 kilometers. So let's make that into meters. Okay, so that's going to be 1,200. And then the adjacent is 75. Now, if I do inverse tan, because I need to find an angle, so I want to do inverse tan, inverse tan of 1,200 divided by 75, that's going to give me an angle of 86.42 degrees. Now, 86.42 degrees, if I then, I know that this angle here and this angle theta, they add to 90, don't they? So I need to subtract that 86.42 from 90. Okay, so then if I was to do that, that's going to give me 3.57 degrees. And it says here, which is closest to? So, so the answer would be, it's closer to four, isn't it? Yeah? So there's a little bit of a trick there. So it's sort of, uh, yeah, be, make, make sure you read the question carefully. Which it's, Whichever one suits the best. And, and given that 3.57 is closest to 4, that is the answer, okay? That is the answer. Are there any questions so far? Okay, so once again, we're finding H. So, so we're finding H. Do we know, do we have enough information here? Um, well, yes, we do, because we've got an interior angle and we've got the adjacent, we've got the adjacent and we've got the hypotenuse. So we're using cos of 31 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is our H over, well, that's a bit weird, isn't it? H, H over here, but it's actually, I've called this the hypotenuse H. It doesn't really make sense, does it? So... So I might just call that, I might just do that over 7.5 like so. And then remember when we have this on the, just just treat this like a fraction. We can now cross multiply like so. Okay, so we can leave the H where it is and we can get that 7.5 over there. 7.5 times cos of 31 degrees, of which I'll need to work this out in the calculator as well. Times trig cos of 31. So I've got 6.428. So the closest one is 6.4. Okay, flying through these, but hopefully if you've got any questions, you stick your hand up and I can pause it. <clears throat> the distance between two vertical posts is eight metres. So once again, let's draw a diagram. We've got um, if the height of the two posts are 1.2 metres and 1.9 metres. So, okay, so this can be the 1.21 and this can be the 1.91. Then the angle of elevation from the top of the shorter one, so basically what they're saying is they want the angle of elevation here. That's what they want. They want this angle theta, angle of elevation. So the shortest post is... Well, first of all, we've got to construct a, a triangle and that we know that this is this distance here is eight metres, okay? And, of course, if 1.9, that means that we have uh, this distance from here to here is 1.9 subtract 1.2, which is 0 0.7. Now I can just rub those out and then you simply got a triangle, which we're trying to find, that angle to. Okay, so therefore we're using the adjacent. This is the adjacent, and we're using the opposite, aren't we? Okay, so we're going to say that tan theta is equal to opposite, which is 0 0.7 over 8. So now we need to do inverse. Now what we're really doing is we're doing inverse tan of both sides. So inverse tan of tan theta is cancelling out the tan. And I'm doing, oops, I'm doing the inverse tan of both sides. So I'm doing inverse tan of the right-hand side, 0 0.7, 
like so. Now, you don't need to obviously do that for a multiple choice question, but what we're saying is then theta is equal to inverse tan of 0 0.7 over 8. So let's do that. Trig inverse tan, inverse tan, 0 0.7, 0 0.7 divided by 8. That gives me 5 degrees. So pretty close to 5 degrees. 5.00064. Okay. All right, I hope you're following me so far. Value of x um, in the diagram. Well, once again, let's label it. But remember, the thing that's opposite the, the right angle is always the hypotenuse, isn't it? And this, this over here adjacent, this is the adjacent. So we need to identify that we're using cos. So we've got cos of 75 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is 3 over x. Now, this one's a little bit trickier in that the fact that x is on the bottom, okay? So a lot of students, they sort of struggle and they actually sort of multiply by 3 and stuff. But so we need to get x. We need to get x over there. So if I get x over there, if I use my cross multiplication, or you guys might remember the bow tie method, okay? Get everything, get the x. The x swaps with the cos 75. So we're going to do that x, and that's just over 1. The 3 stays where it is, and the cos 75 is on the bottom, like so. Make sure your calculator's in degree mode and stuff. You can use your fractions tool if you want to make things easier. 3 divided by cos 75 is equal to, uh, I've got 11.59. So the answer is that. Some of you, I'm going to say that some of you, when you have the denominator on the bottom, if your algebra is not quite up to speed, you, that, you've got to be careful of that because a lot of people well, actually, it'll be 3 times cos 75, not 3 divided by cos 75. Just trust me on that one. That's something that students make that mistake a lot. All right, so that's why I mentioned it. Right angle triangle has side lengths 5, 12, and 13. So 5, 12, and 13. That actually sounds to me like a Pythagorean triangle. Okay, 5, 12, and 13. So, so we know that the 13 is going to be the hypotenuse. And, and just for the, for the time being, like, let's just say that this is drawn, this isn't to scale clearly, 5, 12, and 13. The smallest angle in the triangle is calculated using. So which one's going to be the smallest angle? Which one is going to be the smallest angle? The, the top right? You're saying this one? Okay, so that would be inverse tan of 5 on 12, you're saying? Did anyone actually, like, confidently do this question? Yes. Okay, so yeah, absolutely. I think that this that, that might be one where you just need to put it in your calculator. Absolutely. There is a geometrically way to doing it, but I, I, I see that that might be one where you actually just do it in your calculator. So if we do trig inverse tan of, uh, sorry, inverse tan of, um, now I could confuse you more about about another way of doing it, but I think that that's, that's uh, the one that Daniel suggested. So that gives me an angle of 21 degrees. And in actual fact, that's the smallest of all those angles, isn't it? So, so yeah, a tricky question, a tricky question. A lot of students would have just guessed that, wouldn't known where to go. So that's really good insight there, Daniel. Um, foot of the ladder is placed 1.5 metres away from a wall, so that's 1.58. The angle of elevation to the top of the ladder, angle of elevation is always from the horizontal is 70 degrees. So we're going to say that that's 70 degrees. That's 70 degrees. That means that, of course, that, that that angle in there is 20 degrees because all angles in a triangle must add to 180. What is the angle of depression of the foot of the ladder 
from the top of the ladder. Angle of depression. Is that what they're asking for? Yeah? Okay, so if that's 20 degrees, hmm. If they're asking for this, so so let's the angle of depression of the foot of the ladder, the foot of the ladder. I'm assuming that's that's here. The foot of the ladder, or from the top of the ladder. So I'm I'm sort of assuming that they're referring to this. Now now, given the fact that this is these two angles are alternate to each other. I would say it's 70 degrees, so wouldn't the answer be none? Is that what you guys got? The angle of the, it's from, it's from the, it's from the horizontal. Okay, and if I just go quickly to the, uh, the, the, the answers. They said none. None of the none of the above. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at that. I'm going to have a look at that. Sorry, I think yeah. I reckon that might be wrong. So so we'll we'll, we'll review that in a second. Okay. All right. Let's let's push on. Let's push on. Okay. By the way, people write wrong solutions. Okay. Um, just trust me. There is errors in these solutions. All right. I'm going over this with you guys, Shh. and if I make a mistake, well, we'll correct it. If a ship travels on a bearing, shh, I'm going to make more mistakes if people are speaking over me. If a, if a ship travels on a bearing of 70 degrees for five kilometres, so let's do that. So we've got true north, and it's going uh, at 70 degrees. So here's, here's 70 degrees, for example. Okay, and it goes to five kilometres. Then on a bearing of 250 degrees. Now, a bearing of 250, let's just show you that. Now, it's going to go 180, right? And then, look at that. These angles are alternate to each other. So that's actually 70 degrees in there. Now, now 180 plus, that's 250. That's actually going to be heading back in the same direction. Okay, that's the trick to it. So if you go five kilometres that way, they take a little bit more and then four kilometres back in the same direction, then how far you were from your original position? One kilometre. I like that question. Gets you thinking. Yes, it's a good one. Okay, the angle VAC, this time we've got thirds and square roots, in other words. The angle BAC. Now, just so you know, the angle BAC, what does that mean? Well, first of all, we go from B to A to C, and it's that angle in the middle. So we want this angle. This is angle BAC. That's how we would write it, okay? Now, how do I get that angle? Well, I've got the hypotenuse, and I've got the, I've got the adjacent. So what we've got is we've got cos of, let's call this angle BAC theta, Okay, let's call that theta. Cos of theta is equal to 2 root 6 over 3 root 6. Now, of course, that's going to be the root 6s cancel out. In actual fact, we've just got theta is equal to inverse cos of 2 thirds. Okay, and that's going to be, well, let's have a look. Inverse cos, inverse cos of 2 thirds. 48, 48 degrees. It's not exactly 48, it's 48.189, but it's, we'll, we'll go to 48. Exactamundo, you said it, Math Lord. Okay, he's been demoted from Math God to Math Lord. Okay, haven't found a new girlfriend or anything, have you, Elliot? No? Okay, all right. Now... <clears throat> In this triangle, we it says here that angle RPQ is 32 degrees and PQR is also 32 degrees. And the distance from P to Q is 12.5. What is the length of PR? 
Well, what we can do is is we can split this up. We can split this up like so, and we can make that a right angle triangle, couldn't we? Okay. So if we given given that those two those two angles are the same, then that's like an isosceles triangle. So we've got to split that up. But if we're splitting it down the middle, then then that means that that's going to be, we're going to have 6.25 here, okay? And then we've got and then we've got 32 degrees. And then, of course, we just need to find this distance here, x, okay? So we can use the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Cos of 32 degrees is equal to 6.25 over... X. So therefore, I'm doing this, the old switcheroo, swipping, uh, swapping that, 6.25 over cos 32, and that's going to give me my answer. So let's, uh, let's go 6.25 divided by cos of 32. 7.37. 7.37 it is. Okay, how far east of O from uh, is O from A? So, so obviously here we've got a right angle triangle. Gee, a lot of re repetition here. We've got a four kilometers here. So we're actually trying to find this distance here, aren't we? So given that we have the angle, we can do that quite easily. We've got the adjacent and we've also got the hypotenuse. So we're doing cos of 65 degrees is equal to, let's call it x. How far east of O from A? That's fine. So x is over, over and the hypotenuse is 4. So x, now that's where we can just multiply. 4 times cos 65 degrees. And that's going to give us 4 times cos of 65 and that's going to be 1.69 kilometers are we getting most of these good it's good to hear all right that's the multiple choice done okay look a lot of these short answers though a lot of repetition of this sort of stuff a lot of socket tower and things like that Let's keep, let's keep pushing on. Find the value of x in these right angle triangles. Correct to two decimal places. Well, once again, we've got the adjacent here and we've got the opposite. So all I want to see is I want to see that 10 of 34.5 is equal to 12.6 over x. And then we can say that x is equal to, do the old switcheroo, X is equal to 12.6 over 10 of 34.5, which is equal to 12.6 divided by 10 of 34.5. And it says here to two decimal places. So I've got 18.33. Is that what you got? Very good. X is equal to, or approximately equal, so you can say 18.33, there's no unit, so all good. Now, this one is a two-step problem because, first of all, we've got to find X. But un shh, listen up, listen up, boys. We've got to find X, but in order to do that, you need two, You need an angle and a side length to find another side length. So we, we need to use, uh, we need to find what this hypotenuse, this shared thing is here. So so we're going to call that H, just you know, would make sense to. And what we're going to say is we're going to say that the adjacent cos of 31 degrees is equal to 4 over H. So therefore H is equal to, do the old switcheroo, 4 over cos of 31 degrees, like so. Now, when I do that, um, 4 divided by cos of 31 degrees, that's going to give me 4.67. We'll round it to two decimal places, okay? 
4.67. There's one mark. Now what we've got is we've got, don't be, be careful, that's not the, not the hypotenuse anymore because that's actually going to be, we know the hypotenuse is the longest side length, okay, which is opposite the right angle. So what we have is we have the opposite to this angle. So what we now have is so we, have, we have to use sine. Sine of 41 degrees is equal to H, which is 4.67 over X. The old switcheroo again. X is equal to 4.67 over sine of 41 degrees. And, of course, that is going to be equal to 7.12. I'll take your word for it. Okay, good. Good, goody, goody gumdrops. Now, <clears throat> find the value of theta. So this time we're just using inverse tan, just the same before. But in, in, at least we're getting, oh, well, this is actually just one and one mark. Okay, this time we're using the opposite. We're using the hypotenuse, aren't we? So that means that's going to be sine of, sine of theta is equal to, my trig ratio, sine of theta is equal to 4 over 8. Now, this is actually one of these ones where I can tell you that I know for a fact, and I went through it with you a little bit, the exact, if, if sine of theta is a half, then theta must be 30 degrees. Okay, and that's because that comes with the, those triangles that i shown you. Remember I shown you that equilateral triangle, which was 2, 2, and 2, angle of 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees, and then we cut it down the middle, making that 30 degrees, and that's where it comes from, using Pythagoras' theorem and stuff. So there's actually some that we actually know. Okay, but you, you can do that in your calculator. Don't expect you to know that just, just yet, that definitely in year 11 you will be. Okay, last but not least, uh, we have the adjacent. We've got uh, cos theta is equal to 7.9 over 9.3. So theta is equal to inverse cos of that. Like so. Inverse cos of 7.9 divided by 9.3. 31.8485, because we're looking at the next one. 31.85. What? Degrees. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Okay. How are we feeling so far? Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is when we get into these bearing things, a bush walk, bush walker and all that sort of thing. You're going to really need to, to pay careful attention to these ones. Shh. So, a bush walker. Walk six kilometres on a true bearing of 205 degrees. So let's let's do that. And now 205 degrees basically means that if I draw a little compass and, and, and this is 180, that actually means that he's walking in this direction here. Okay, and then that now now that this distance, this angle in here is going to be what? 20 25 degrees. Okay, so that's 25 degrees in there, all right, 25 degrees. Then he walks due south for five kilometres, so he's done six-kilometre walk in that direction, and then he goes five kilometres down, like so. Okay, that's, that's basically what's happening. Draw a clear diagram. To me, that's clear enough, all right? You can, you've labelled six, you've labelled five, you've labelled the angle, Okay. Now, find the distance south of the bushwalker is from the starting point. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this little triangle over here, this triangle here, and we're going to bring it down here because when we do that, that will just make our life a lot easier. So as you can see, I've got a 25-degree angle here. This is also happens to be a right angle. Okay, and this is 6 kilometres. So because I have an angle and I have a side length, I can find this distance here, which I'm going to call this S for south, okay? 
So we need to find that distance because then once you find that distance, we know that after that, he walks another five kilometres south. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got the adjacent, we've got the adjacent, and we've got the hypotenuse. So we're using ka, cos. So it's cos 25 degrees is equal to my adjacent, which is S. Looks like a five, but it's an S over six. So therefore, we can say that S is equal to six cos of 25 degrees. We haven't quite answered the question yet, though. Six times trig cos 25 equals 5.44. Correct. So two decimal places. Let's do an approximate sign. 5.44 kilometres. Find the distance, however, south the bushwalker is from the starting point. So therefore, we write in English the distance south is... 10.44 kilometres because you need to add that to the five kilometres he walks south after he walks in a bearing of 205 degrees. Okay, please make it very clear what your answer is because I, I'm finding it very hard to award, award some marks or them be taking marks away because I need to see a clear answer. Okay, if I have to find do a bit of where's Wally trying to find your answer, then you will unfortunately lose marks. And that's a VCE thing too, okay? That's how VCE exams are marked. You need to have a clear answer shown. Okay, now, two vertical buildings um, are 45 metres apart. So let's draw a diagram again. You don't get necessarily a mark all the time for drawing the diagram, but but uh, we, we can say that the shorter building is 123 metres high. So let's... Let's draw a really nice picture. We've got 123, this is 123 metres, okay, and and it says here that we don't know the height of the taller building, but we do know that the angle of elevation is 60 degrees, okay. So what we're going to say is that, okay, yep, yeah, that's 60 degrees. That actually doesn't look like 60 degrees, but anyway, um, let's just say that that is 60 degrees, okay? So the angle there is 60 degrees, and this is the tallest building, okay? And it says here that they're 45 metres apart. So what we can really do, we have constructed is we've constructed a right angle triangle. Now, this distance in here is 45 metres, okay? And it says that the shorter one is 123. Now, it says the angle of elevation from the top of the shorter building to the top of the taller building is 60 degrees. Find the height of the taller building. So we want to find this uh, height here. Okay, don't get that confused with the hypotenuse, though. But now what we've got is we've got a triangle where we've got the adjacent and we've got the opposite, don't we? So that's going to be ton, ton of 60 degrees is equal to the height of the building, it's the opposite, and then we've got over 45. And look, that's a good, it's not, not so bad because H stays where it is. The 45 with cross multiplying goes to the other side. So therefore we can say that H is equal to 45 tan of 60 degrees. Now, I'm gonna take, oh, this is gonna be interesting. I did say that 30, 60 degrees, uh, exact values. Now let me think about it. Sine of 60 is root 3 on 2 and sine of say, cos of 60 is a half. So it's going to be root 3. So that's going to be uh, 45. 45 root 3 would be the exact. But it says to the nearest metre. So I can tell you now if I did 45 root 3 and rather than doing that tan of 60, 45 of 45 times root 3 will be your answer, which is 77.94. But it says here, be, read the question to the nearest metre, which is therefore approximately equal to, so, so H is approximately equal to 78 metres. So therefore, how tall is the taller building? 
therefore, yes, therefore the taller building, building is, yes, approximately, or we can just say in this case, because it's said to the nearest mate, 201 metres tall. 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 Cool? Make it clear for me, please. All right? And, of course, you would hate to do all that working and then just because you didn't read the question. All right? All right. Now, how are we going? Have we got much left? Okay, we're going to smash through this. Okay. Now, draw and label a suitable triangle to find BAF. So, look. B, I'm going to get a different colour here. I'm going to get my highlighter out, okay? I'm going to get my pink highlighter out. It's going to look so pretty. B, B, A, F, okay? B, A, F, which means that we want the one in the middle. We want that angle in the middle, don't we? Okay, so draw and label a suitable diagram and find B, A, F. So I'm going to go back to my pen now. Let's do it in green because I'm feeling really excited um so now just so you know this is a right angle because that's a rectangle okay so this over here is a this is b and this is f that's the diagram we want you to draw and uh and find that angle so i'm going to call that angle theta now this is 16 and this here is 7 so what we can say is that we've got the opposite and the adjacent, so we're using tan. So tan theta is equal to 7 over 16. So therefore, theta is equal to inverse tan of 7 on 16. What is that? What, what's the angle? So 23.63 degrees. Thank you. Find the length of AF. Okay, so find the length of AF. Now, look, you could do Pythagoras if you wanted to because it's a right-angle triangle. Couldn't you? You could do it a number of ways. Look, I'm, you know what? I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to say that AF, it's a right-angle triangle. AF squared is equal to 16 squared plus 7 squared. Shh. Now, 16 squared in my head is 256 and uh, and uh, 7 squared is 49. So, therefore, that's going to be the square. So, AF squared is equal to 305. So, therefore, AF is equal to the square root of 305, which is two decimal places, 17.46. Thank you very much. Very good. Now, you know that you could have done soccer toll with that, though, couldn't you? Okay, because you've got the two side lengths, so, so you could have done soccer toll up. All right, no problem whatsoever. You found the angle is, is what I'm trying to say. Hence, draw a suitable tr uh, triangle and give GAF correct to two decimal places. GAF. Okay, this is a little bit different. Okay, look, this is, this is where we're looking at things in 3D. Now, you can see here we've found this thing here. But when I do GAF, it actually looks like so. It's actually, can you see there that the hypotenuse, the, the AF, is actually like, so I'm going to get that triangle over here, and basically I'm going to, it's going to look, and it's really hard to tell. Basically what happens is we've got a, a right-angle triangle. Okay, the hypotenuse is AG. This is AG. This, this, this just can be a bit tricky to picture. And then what, what the hypotenuse was for AF and what we've found is for AF is 17.46, that's going to be 17.46, okay? And what's the height? What's this height here? Three centimetres, yes, okay? A little bit tricky. This is, these are the ones in 3D, okay? So, therefore, AG, so, and, and so hence GAF. So we want to find GAF, which is that angle in there. So what that is, is so that's going to be tan theta. Tan theta is equal to opposite, which is 3 over 17.46. And therefore, theta is equal to, or GAF, 
is equal to trig inverse tan 3 over 17.46. Oh, jeez. Okay, 3 over 17.46. 9.75. 9. That's a tricky one. That's a very tricky one to pitch to picture and visualize. That might be one to put in your bound reference. Okay? Okie dokily. Is this the last question? Oh, geez, we've still got more. Okay. Find the value of X. Label the vertices of the triangles. <clears throat> These are the vertices of the triangles, aren't they? They're the vertices of the triangles. Well, we've got to call them A and B. Yeah. Write down a series of steps representing your plan of attack. We want to find X. In order to find X, what basically what we're going to do is we're going to actually find this H here. Okay? So what we're going to do is we've got tan of... We've got... We've got the adjacent and we've got the op uh, hypotenuse. So tan of 40, tan of 49 is equal to, oh, actually, no. These triangles both have this in common, don't they? Like if I have this triangle here and this triangle there, they both have this in common. Yeah? So what we're going to do is I'm going to call this, I don't know, I'm going to call this X, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we've got, we've got the adjacent and then we've got the opposite. So we've got tan of 49 is equal to X over 6. So X is equal to 6 tan of 49 degrees. That's the first thing you do. Now, once you do that, then what we can say is that we've got to find find the value of x in the following, which is x. Oh, that thing. So, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say that this, we've got 6. This distance is 6 plus x. So I'm not going to call this x, by the way. I'm going to call this y. And then that, I'm going to call that y. And that's going to be y. Okay, so what we're going to say is that 6 plus x, let's, let's do this angle in here, tan of 42.15 is equal to my opposite, which is y, that's this guy over here, 6 tan of 49 degrees over the adjacent which is 6 plus x. Now, what you've got to then do is you've got to solve this equation. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this. I'm going to do the old switcheroo. Okay, I'm going to get this over here, 6 plus x, and then that's going to be 6 tan of 49 degrees over tan of 42.15 degrees. And then I sim simply do what if I want to solve for x? Subtract 6. Subtract 6, don't I? Subtract 6 from both sides. So therefore, x is equal to, now I've done that with algebra without doing any rounding off or anything yet. That's where, I, where I'd love you guys to go, but you might break it down a little bit further. So let's do that and see what we get for an answer. Okay, that's a, that's a good question, though. It's a tricky one. 6 tan of 49 divided by... Uh, tan of 42.15 minus 6. I got, I got X is 1.625. So therefore, X is equal to 1.63. Centimetres. 
Wow, that was a that was a that was a pretty that was a good one. That was a good one. Can, can you see what we how we did it though? First of all, if we found this hypotenuse, that would have been useless because because that hypotenuse has nothing to do with this triangle here. So we had to find y first. Then once we yes. found y, we needed to do that, and then the adjacent is this six plus x. And then rearranging that formula, that's a really nice one, okay? All right, now I'm going to stop there because the bell's about to go. Just quickly, these these ones might be ones that we can go through just maybe on the board next time, but I'm going to stop there because otherwise you guys are going to be late to your next class.